Kelvin Julius Msuya. I'm a medical doctor from Tanzania. I work uh, in a St. Thomas Health Center. I first got the privilege to know about Mark in the last IFFS conference, which is on 2016. My name is Dr. Pantaleo Roman Kavisha. I'm from Tanzania. My name is Nicholas Pazguni. I'm a specialist in obstetrics and gynecology and I come from Tanzania. I work in a, a consultant hospital called Kilimanjaro Christian Medical Center. I'm Jonaki Siamwa, a biomedical scientist from Ghana with the Fini Hospital and Fertility Center. I was selected by Ghana Association of Clinical Embryologists and Fertility Society of Ghana. Since this is the first batch to happen in India, I'm very privileged to be here because um, my African embryologist training program is really fruitful, giving us opportunities which you would otherwise have difficult to get into. In Tanzania, the situation of infertility has not been so good. First of all, I can say infertility is not given the attention it deserves. And, um, you know, it's like a taboo to, you know, to the community when the couple seem you not know, to have a child. So they tend to find themselves, you know, in all areas through spiritual, you know, means trying to see if anything can happen, or even if they can have any good news, or, you know, going to meet some herbalists and all that for treatment and all that. So finally, before they even end up in a center, um, a lot might have gone wrong. If it had been seen earlier, treatment would have been easier for them to have handled. You know, our statistics back home show that most of the divorce rates being linked to the issues of infertility or childlessness. The other major challenge is the lack of awareness. Infertile couples coming in, if you ask them, they have never even heard about assisted reproductive technologies, things like intrauterine insemination, IVF, X. These are not well known. Our patients are not informed about these issues. Infertility being as a problem that will affect both a male and female, but in our country, traditional people think that infertility affects only women. And women have been blamed that are the reason of infertility. We have seen so much of the intimate partner violence. We have seen so much of the domestic violence. We have seen so much of uh, gender-based violence just because of the uh, belief that people are having towards infertility, the human resources. This is a very big challenge because to have a fully functional functioning fertility center, you need a trained personnel in terms of embryology, in terms of clinicians who will be stimulating patients before they undergo assisted reproductive technology. We have very few, if none at all, uh, personnel that who, who are trained specifically for infertility care. The cost is very high and majority of our patients have been opting to go outside the country, which also again is it's a very huge challenge in terms of cost-wise. And the last challenge that I can say that is very important to be addressed is the issue of a lack of already set policies and guidelines to guide the infertility practice in our country. To date, I can say we don't have any set-aside laws that will govern or lead people to offer infertility care. So the uh, MAC African Embryology Training Program, it's very fruitful. So the training has been structured in such a way you are being trained to understand the physiology, the anatomy of both male and female reproductive system. You cannot explain the abnormal if you don't know the normal. The second part of our training is the theoretical part in terms of uh, assisted reproductive technology techniques. The third part, I may say, has been the, the practical aspect uh, of training. The opportunity that we have had to understand the basic principles and the advanced methods of uh, making sure that you have a very good outcome in terms of assisted reproductive technology has been well covered. In this program, what we intend to do is to provide the necessary unmet need that we have today, and that is good quality trained personnel to be able to deliver the quality that is comparable to anywhere around the world. And important to note that this is hands-on training for scientists. We did this because we felt that this need has to be bridged in the community because infrastructure can come up very quickly with the government. But what we need is trained personnel, both clinicians and embryologists. I would like to tell all my embryologists over here who are now on the verge of completing their three months course with us over here. And I'm sure by the smiles on their faces as you know that they have been extremely happy because a hungry mind needs knowledge and once they get that knowledge there is a smile on their face and that says it all that is the enthusiasm they have and that is the enthusiasm I want them to go back to their countries Tanzania and Ghana and to be able to never give up and to be able to go and work Rome was never built in a day 
you may have a lot of obstacles but the only way you will overcome is your grit and determination that's really going to make a success of IVF it's not a low hanging fruit but it's not too high either uh, i'm very grateful to uh, mac and milan fertility center because they've been working together and in hand to make sure that this happens and well structured and uh, staff here who have been involved in our training well well dedicated in terms of making sure that by the time we finish this training we will be independent embryologists that we can work as a standalone embryology and making sure that we bring change to our society. I would like to acknowledge and congratulate Mark more than a mother for having an ear onto the uh, underprivileged societies. That's how we got this opportunity of training. So I would really say thank you to Mark uh, more than a mother and Mark African Embryology Training Program for this uh, opportunity because it has not only helped us, it has helped the entire community and society where we are coming from. This is a very huge responsibility that MEC have decided to take. Building a capacity in Africa is one of the very important issues that should be taken on board if we really want to deal with infertility. And I believe in the next five, ten years to come, this will be a job well done.